Time for another nostalgia trip, my friends. I imagine a lot of us watched Word Girl as kids. You know, that awesome show about Becky Bosford, the young girl superhero with the monkey sidekick who taught you so much vocabulary. I used to love this show as a kid, and it was one of my top contenders on the PBS Kids blog. Even more so than some of the shows I've discussed before. But what happened to this show? Why did it get cancelled? And how does its legacy hold up today? Well, shalom ladies and jellyfish, welcome back to Ask Air. As today I'll be answering these questions and taking a trip down nostalgia lane to see what the hell happened to Word Girl. Word up. Listen for the words, nostalgia, and retrospective. We got a lot to talk about with this one. As always, we start with the- Hold on just a second. This show has a monkey character too? Oh, come on, I just reviewed the good monkey show. Wait. Does he? Oh no. Not the Taylor's monkey again! How hard is it to loop a tail animation for God's sake? What kind of lackadaisical crap is this? Oh, by the way, lackadaisical refers to a lacking of enthusiasm and determination and general laziness. But you already knew that, because you can understand context, because you're not four anymore! God, they took all the naivety out of us, didn't they? Anyway, this show was created by Dorothea Gillum, who also worked on such things as Hey Money and... What's this? George, you little rascal. Where do you keep popping in here from? Gillum is said to have created Word Girl to respond to the idea that children's television wasn't intelligent enough, feeling that most shows underestimated their sense of humor and intellect. I certainly agree with this statement, and this approach is totally apparent through the writing, which is by far the best part of this show. You can immediately tell watching the episodes, this was written by a much more mature set of writers who care a lot more about the story and dialogue, as well as delivering a story that makes kids more inquisitive and curious, rather than bored robots who are spoon-fed manufactured crap through a screen, like pretty much everything else these days. In fact, I don't want to sound like one of those guys, but at least in the realm of shows aimed at an audience this young, you rarely see shows like this on TV anymore. And you're damn right this show won a bunch of Emmys for writing, totally well deserved. I mean even the name of a planet, Lexicon, is a word for vocabulary. God damn! Likewise, the characters in this show are iconic. You have Becky herself. She comes from this planet called Lexicon, god I wish we got to see her biological parents, and was brought to Earth by Captain Huggy Face, you know, the monkey, until she was adopted by human parents. You know, like Batman. I mean Flash. I mean, Wonder Woman. I mean, Becky's characterization is interesting enough for the concept, and it's not like I'm gonna make any Aviva style jokes for her, because that would be completely inappropriate. And then there's the monkey, who merely serves to deliver good expositional vocabulary segues, and occasional comic relief, if you want to call it that. And you have the mom, whose voice is just super weird. <laughs> Your father and I went a little We've planned one amazing surprise after another. And you have the narrator, who might just be the greatest narrator I've ever talked about on this channel. He's just iconic, to be honest. Join us next time in another exciting episode of Word Girl! And there's all the villains Word Girl faces throughout the show, such as Chuck the Evil Sandwich Making Guy, the Whammer, Dr. Two Brains, and the Butcher, who thank God isn't French. We can't have another one. Even the infamous Toby, who is a fun character who has his crush on Word Girl. What kind of simp- Yeah, all the characters in the show are relatable and likable, which is definitely one of his strong suits. Now, but back to Toby, though. Doesn't his robot look exactly like the Iron Giant? I mean, I messed up by comparing way big from Ben 10 to Iron Giant instead of Ultraman. But this is just a carbon copy! Oh yeah, carbon copy refers to a person or thing identical or very similar to another. For example, I want to die right now. As you're probably thinking, what the hell is this animation? I can't tell if it's good, bad, or something in the middle, right? Well, you'd certainly have a point. The animation in this show is certainly interesting. Thing. Word Girl was flash animated, like a lot of PBS Kids cartoons. And while I don't consider this show as nice visually as, let's say, Wild Kratz, it's not a terrible looking show at all, and the way the characters move is just something slightly different. It looks a bit like a video game cutscene, which would make sense, because the show is produced by an animation unit of Scholastic Entertainment for PBS called Soup to Nuts, which was famous for choppy, kinetic looking animation that reused frames. The company also literally made video games, so what more do you expect? Yeah, whatever you think of the animation, and I tend to lean a bit more to the negative side personally, there's no denying the writing and characters carried this show, which I hold much more credible than a show that looks good, but lacks any good story or character development. <laughs> but yeah, a few shadows wouldn't hurt. As far as the audio goes, this show isn't too bad, other than the mom, who sounds a bit funny to me. The voice acting is quite good. We got a lot of talented people on the show, including Dana Furman, Ryan Raditz, Tom Kenny, and Patton Oswalt. The theme song is stellar. I mean, absolutely awesome. The visuals, the song, everything. It's totally worth the time it's given, and it's catchy and memorable. The music is also pretty good, except for this one stupid sound effect you'll be bound to notice because it plays once every 20 goddamn seconds. Well, when you are in harmony with someone or something, then you have the same thoughts or feelings. It's the feeling you get when you're absolutely sure of something and you have no doubts about it. Oh, not again. It's like the Johnny Chess whip cracks all over again. How much suspense do two little harpsichords really bring anyway? Tonight, and we'll 
So what happened to Word Girl? Well, the show ran for 130 episodes, plus 30 additional shorts, spending 8, or I guess 9, long seasons, over a 9 year period, before being cancelled in 2015. Unlike other properties that were constantly switched around between corporate entities, Word Girl remained on PBS for the entirety of its tenure. I think the cancellation was fitting and kept the show in a state of consistent quality before seasonal rock could rear its ugly head, and basically allowed it to quit while it was still ahead. A show amounting to that many seasons and episodes is already rare on its own, so it's not really worth getting upset in my opinion. Word Girl got all the opportunity it needed to shine in those 250 episode segments. There was no real reason for the show ending, other than the fact that the Soup to Nuts studio shut down, which I guess ushered a symbolic close of the Word Girl curtain, thus ending the show on the episode Rhyme and Raisin. Wait, Rhyme and Raisin? Double R? That folks is what we call alliteration! Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like, and let me know anything and everything you think about Word Girl. Any nostalgic memories you'd like to share? What experiences did you have with this show? Be sure to let me know all that in the comments down below, and consider subscribing if this video managed to entertain you in some way. I have similar videos like this on a bunch of other shows, including Wild Crass, Curious George, Tim in 2003, Johnny Tess, Spongebob, even Fairly Odd Parents. So if you like retrospectives, I've linked those in the description below and card above. The Twitter and Discord are linked below as well, and with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.